Thank you. Okay. Just one second. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm Natalie Jimenez, and I oversee the environmental affairs section. So I actually wear two hats at uh, LA County Public Works. I do all of the public education, and I also oversee the household hazardous waste program. So that's why I'm here today to speak about our SHARPS program, our countywide SHARPS program, and how we manage um, SHARPS. Let me see if I can get this straight. Is that the one? Okay, we'll Technical difficulties here, but we'll get it together. Which one is it? Oh, I'm sorry. Just oh, this one. Click the mouse is what I did. Oh, mouse, mouse. Yeah, the mouse okay, is we're here. Looking. Sorry. Oh, there it is. is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, now we're together. All right. As um, we um, Heidi just spoke about Senate Bill 1305, in anticipation of the bill. Okay, I'm sorry. You can also use the button. Yeah, this right here. You don't have to use the mouse. You can just use this. This is oh, okay. forward. All right. Okay, we're getting it together here this morning. Um, okay, where was I? Okay, so Senate Bill 1305 was coming into uh, place uh, in September 1st of 2008. So we looked at the bill and we said, okay, you know, is there something that government needs to do? Well, the, the state prohibited, um, prohibited uh, residents from disposing of it in their trash or recycling bin or green waste containers. And it also needed to be transported in an approved container. And um, cities and counties were encouraged to do something, but we, the, the mandate didn't impose us to do anything. However, um, since we do hold the nation's largest household hazardous waste program, we were getting uh, residents coming in with backpacks full of sharps with boxes full of sharps and you know putting them in plastic bags and coming to our events and also coming to our permanent centers and so we knew people wanted to generally do the right thing however there were no alternatives there was nowhere where they could take them so that we were getting them at our household hazardous waste so we said okay we need to bring them in we need to do something what is it we're gonna do? So we started doing our research and uh, we met with the city of Los Angeles also because they were trying to do a, implement a program also. And um, we applied for a state grant and were approved for a state grant to start a pilot program. We did, prior to that, we called the Walgreens. We called the CVS and we were just getting the run around and no one wanted to come up and you know say yes, I'm gonna take back these needles. And so um, we were hoping the city was also working with Target at the time to try to get into their pharmacies and see if they would um, take back and they also didn't have uh, good results. So we knew we needed to do something. We applied for a grant and we sat around and said, okay, well, what is it, if we can't get to the manufacturers, then who else is distributing these sharp containers that we can, let's look at it broadly. Okay, so people are going to the hospitals, people are going to their doctors, and the doctors are prescribing this, right? Well, lucky enough, I, used, I in my previous job, I worked with all 38 county departments, so I knew kind of the county end of it. The county's huge. So I said, okay, let's go to public health, let's go to the health department, and let's, let's start there. Let's start working our way there and see if we can get into these these um, facilities and see if they'll take it back. So our initial meeting with health, health services, um, again, you know, everybody's having budget cuts because there is some responsibility and some monetary, um, they have to put it into their budgets to take back these, these sharps. So luckily, we were successful with, um, with um, public health, and so with our, sharps contain, with our SHARPS grant that we received, we went out and we purchased um, containers. We said, okay, we gotta get the containers in the right, we gotta get the SHARPS in the right containers. We bought, our first purchase was a 1.5 quart, which was the smaller um, quart that we have up here up front. And so when people would come to our, the red one, 
And so when people would come to our HHW events and we were distributing these and giving them to the residents, letting them know, okay, we have these, these, these courts for you to use, they wanted like two or three of them. And so we knew we were gonna run out. So uh, lo and behold, our next order was for the one gallon because they were filling up fast. So now we, we distribute the one gallon um, containers and they're state approved. And we also knew that we needed to have something that was going to help the elderly because they're the ones that are, you know, that's our target audience, the elderly and the people that are disabled that are, that are, are self-injecting themselves. So we needed to get a mail, mail back uh, program uh, started. So as you know, those, those containers are a lot more. So we do um, make sure when they call us for a container, we ask them if, you know, if they can come to one of our events, and if they can't, then we will mail them back a container. So that's how we started our program, through a state grant. Um, in, at the time, it was in cooperation with, or in partnership with the City of West Covina and Public Health. Um, today, we have over, let me double check my notes. We have over 100 collection sites, and that's including our, our 60 mobile events. And we have a, an agreement with the city of Los Angeles, and I think this is what Heidi was referring to. Near Burbank, within five miles, in the city of Glendale, there's a safe center that belongs to the city of Los Angeles. However, we have an agreement where uh, residents countywide can take their Sharps containers. So that would include residents from the city of Burbank, just to clarify. Um, and so we have 150 distribution sites. That's including the 14 health, uh, public health clinics. We did um, go back to our board of supervisors and ask them to help us in pushing some of the other departments to get on board and um, help us get the word out. So we worked with the Department of Health Services at this time, the fire department, and um, uh, senior, uh, what is it called, senior services. And um, they came on board and they're also distribution sites. Um, then we also had Goodwill that helped us. And so they're also a distribution site and at our headquarters and other city, cities that wanted to get involved and also wanted to distribute at their city halls um, uh, containers. Okay, so our successful partnership with, the, with public health, they have designated 14 distribution and collection, and they also collect the sharps for us. Um, they reported no safety issues, so it hasn't been a problem for them. And because that's one of the biggest concerns when you approach people, they're like, no, 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 you know, people are gonna get stuck and no, we don't want this. But at Public Health, they were already doing this. They were already, so it just goes back into their own um, medical waste stream or disposal. And here is um, pictures of, of where they, they dispose of their sharps. So, if a resident goes to one of their public health clinics, they can, they'll ask for a container and um, they'll take them into a room and they'll just put it into their, their waste stream. Like that second slide there, the biohazard. So they don't have like special boxes or anything, it just goes into their, their, their um, waste stream. Then, um, luckily, lucky, luckily for us, the sheriff's departments um, wanted to do their own sharps um, drop-off centers, and also at the same time they did a they did a um, they were collecting uh, drugs. I'm sorry, <laughs> they were collecting drugs. So it's an anonymous drop-off um, center. So it's open 24 hour 24 hours seven days a week, and um, we partnered with them because they soon discovered that uh, their deputies weren't certified to collect this uh, medical waste. So they, they came to us and said, okay, you know, we have these, and this is what we were looking for. We needed more avenues 
because the county is huge. So we needed more avenues of how we were going to not only collect at our HHW events, but to also be able to collect in other, in other areas. So they were starting this program, we had our program, so we met and we said, okay, this is a perfect fit. Um, you have your collection drop-off boxes at 21 sheriff stations, so that's throughout the county. And um, in fiscal year 20, uh, 2010 11, they collected about 9,000 uh, pounds of sharks. So, but the, the first issue that they had, or the, their issue that they had um, at the beginning, was they were getting, well, now there's this drop off center, they were getting um, clinics to drop off their, their medical waste at these. Um, centers, so nobody messes with the sheriff, right? <laughs> so that soon was resolved. <laughs> so this is a picture of uh, the drop-off boxes. Again, there's um, there's drop boxes for um, drugs, and there's uh, drop boxes for sharps. And so, um, just to get the word out, we also did a public outreach campaign where we sent out media releases um, about our partnerships. We did some newspaper advertisements. Um, we had some articles run. We also have a brochure. We have posters that we gave to all the clinics and all the sites. And uh, we also have a dedicated website. In this is our collection set since we started the program. And in, as you can see, when we, when we started it, we had a high number of um, sharps being collected. Um, in 0910, we collected about 18,000 pounds. In 1011, we collected about 15,000 pounds. Um, and that was at our mobile events. At our ABCC, which is our Antelope Valley Collection Center, we collected approximately 2,000 pounds in 0910, and in 1011, we collected about 2,000 pounds. So about a, about a total of 26,000 pounds annually, including the sheriffs. Um, where do we go from here? Well, obviously, we love extended producer responsibility. Um, we want to start partnerships with pharmacies, medical facilities, and any retail stores that want to partner with us. Um, we want to continue our public education because, again, people still don't know that it is illegal to put them in the trash. So I think they, they really need to know about that. And then where to take them. And if we do those two, then definitely we'll increase our collection. Any questions? Yes. Can we get the microphones? I'll repeat it. I'll repeat it. I was just curious to know, you said that um, this program was grant funded? Yes. So moving forward, how long will the grant last? And, um, the grant was actually over in 09, I believe. And um, we continue funding through our solid waste uh, management fee. And um, like Heidi said, we have to look at our overall program and adjust some of the things, like maybe uh, she had mentioned that we had um, decreased some of our mobile collection events. We have nearly 60 a year. We don't have as many just to fund other programs like Sharp's collections. 